for you that uh, think that this thing is uh, bogus, I sense a lot of excitement with this project. Whether this is your first transmitter using a vacuum tube, could be your very first transmitter, or you're an old time builder and you've done solid states your whole ham career and you're ready to dip into tubes, or maybe you just like to get on the 1929 bandwagon, so you might just want to participate in the contest once a year, that's fine. So I've got a breadboard of the breadboard. And by breadboard of the breadboard, I mean this is a 6J5 tube, not the Type 27 that we were going to use. The 6J5, though, is very similar to the 27, so it's a good place to start. And notice I'm not using tubing here. I'm using ordinary wire. What's that all about? So I am uh, using the 365 picofarad capacitor that we talked about, just to see if that would work in the circuit. And there's some oddball things here that we're going to go over. I think uh, some of you are very anxious to get started on the project, so I wanted to get something running as quick as possible. However, the first part of this video I'm going to concentrate on the power supply, the all-important power supply. And we are talking about high voltage here and AC mains, so we have to be very careful and very conscious that we have high voltage on this circuit. I've done everything I can to design it to keep high voltage off the prominent parts, such as the coil, the output link, and the capacitor. All of these are cold. Everything's cold here. In order to find high voltage, you got to kind of look for it, okay, on this breadboard. So that's some safety, but still, uh, keep one hand in the back pocket, as the old timers say. And we'll be moving from the 6J5 to the Type 27. But for now, let's look at the 6J5 and see how much power we can get out with a 150 volt power supply. So some of you will recognize this as an ATX power supply. If you're wondering where to find one of these, uh, look under your bench or in your closet or in your old computer that you haven't used in 10 years and you'll find one. I thought that uh, people were getting a little concerned about the open breadboard style of construction on the 27 type Hartley oscillator. Uh, safety starts with the power supply. So I thought I would build the power supply into an ATX box because it gives you the IEC inlet and uh, you know it's a metal box that's going to give us some protection uh, for the high voltage circuitry. Plus we can steal parts off the ATX circuit board uh, to be used in the power supply. Now, the standard way of building a high voltage power supply doesn't really hold water when you're doing something this simple and this small. We don't have to go out and buy a professional power transformer for $100 for this project. Instead, we can get a couple of probably 3 amp, uh, 6.3 volt transformers and put them back to back in the classic uh, kind of economy style of today. Take the filament off the junction between the two transformers and take the high voltage off the primary of the second transformer that we're now using as the secondary. So the typical idea is to use two transformers back to back. And uh, those two transformers should fit inside this ATX enclosure, along with the bridge rectifier and uh, the dropping resistor that we'll need to bring the voltage down to 2.5 volts. There's many ways of bringing that down to 2.5. Uh, we could rectify it and use a regulator. We could do something fancy with uh, another transformer and so on. But we're just going to do it the simple old-fashioned way of using a dropping resistor. Now, I've built power supplies at this level before in some crazy manners. So this is what is known as a pancake or flat pack 
transformer. As you can see, it has four windings that are separated by plastic spacers. So these are four independent windings. Okay. And it's, uh, it's toroidal in a way because we've only got one set of laminates in a rectangle shape. So you have four windings on there. Now, this is one of those 120, 120, and then two secondaries that are identical. I think it's, uh, these are both 12-volt uh, secondaries. And you can tell which is which from the diameter of the wire. This is thin wire. These, these must be the primaries. With a transformer like this, um, what I would do is I would take all the windings off until I got down to the voltage that I was interested in on one of these secondaries. So I kept taking turns off, kept taking turns off, till you get down to 2.5 volts, and there's your 2.5 volt secondary. And you haven't really done anything but take turns off. Very quick and dirty way of getting the filament voltage. Then Instead of using both primaries, I would only use one of the primaries and come in with the 120 volts here. This secondary is really the other primary, but I'd use it as a secondary for the transformer to develop the high voltage. So I'd use this primary as a secondary and put it in series aiding with the other 12 volt winding, therefore giving me more like 135 volts out. The 135 volts I put into a bridge rectifier, and there we go. We're up to 180 volts DC. So I did everything with this one transformer. So that's another way to do this. Now, you might not be able to find a flat pack transformer like this that you can play with. So I, I still think that the two transformer trick is the way to go. However, if you would like to do it with one transformer, and pay the 30, 40, 50 to 100 bucks, certainly you can do that. So, in looking at the ATX power supply, there are a few parts I can use off the circuit card. These rectifiers will work fine. Depending on the transformers I have, I could use the uh, two diode system uh, with a center tap. Or I could use uh, four of them in a bridge. Also, there's a couple of capacitors there. They're 330 microfarads at 200 volts. Really, just one of those would be adequate for uh, filtering. I will probably uh, take these diodes and one of those capacitors off that board and use it in the uh, power supply project. Okay, the little ATX power supply case has been used for our Hartley oscillator power supply. On the front, I've got an on-off switch and an indicator light, which is good, so you know that it's on or off. On the rear, we have a terminal strip, negative, positive on the high voltage, and these two are the filament to light up the Type 27 tube. I was able to use the IEC inlet. The IEC inlet lets me use a standard cord. Let's take a look inside. So, the first thing you notice is that there are two large transformers. These are transformers that I had on hand. They're probably 6 amp, 6.3 volt transformers, so they have plenty of beef. Bigger is better when you're doing these back-to-back -back transformer supplies. So don't skimp. You want at least a 3 amp, 6.3 volt pair. Also you'll see this big resistor, that's the dropping resistor that takes the 6.3 down to the 2.5 volts that we need for the tube. I was able to use, I think I used three of the diodes from the ATX supply. I have the uh, the proper uh, capacitors on here. These are the X1 capacitors across the line. These are safety caps. So anyway, it's a power supply that I'm going to be using for the Type 27 transmitter. Okay, let me explain what we have here. I have the high voltage part of the power supply hooked up to a 5K 10 watt resistor. Probably our load's going to be a little less than that. 
I think we'll probably have about 4 watts input power, maybe 5 watts input power. So a 5K resistor should work okay with our 160 volts. And then uh, to light the tube we need 2.5 volts. I have done a Variac test already. This is not a smoke test. This meter is looking at the AC across the filament. This meter is looking at the DC across the 5K resistor. So let's turn it on and see if we can light up the tube and see uh, what voltage we arrive at at full load. So you'll notice the voltage has dropped from 160 to about 150 under full load. That's to be expected. And it looks like the filament is creeping up. We're over 2 volts on the tube. Hopefully this thing will stop before we hit too much over 2.5. I'd, I'd rather be a little under 2.5. But you can see with the resistor in series, everything comes up very slowly with the filament. Oh, this is looking really good. Yeah, this is looking great. Looks like we're getting 150 volts key down and 2.49 volts on the filament. That's absolutely perfect. And if we were to look at the top of the tube, you'd see a little tiny speck of light that would tell you that the tube is indeed lit up. Now, one uh, word of caution, safety. And it isn't about voltage, believe it or not. It's about these cases. They are very, very sharp. It's a good idea uh, when you're working with an ATX case to go around all the edges and dull them, or you're going to get some nasty cuts on these power supplies. So there it is. I'm going to let this run for a while, but it looks like that's going to be a good power supply to start with. 150 volts is pretty modest. I think under amateur ICAS operation that you could probably run this tube as high as 200 to 250 volts before it would protest, but uh, 150 volts is a very safe level to get started. I don't think we're going to get a lot of power out at 150 volts, but this is a great place to start. The other nice thing about using the transformers like this is if the secondary has uh, split secondary, 220 volt secondaries in other words, like this one does, you can operate it with a bridge and now we'd have 300 volts. So uh, it might be possible to put a choke in there and uh, drop it down to like 270. You might get away with that with this tube. But if you go to a, a larger tube like a Type 10 or a 210 triode, this might still work for you. Now since we have 6.3 volts available, um, it's probably best to bring it out and put that on a couple of terminals. That will allow the power supply to be a lot more valuable to you because now you can use it with all those 6-volt tubes that you like. I found an ancient 6J5 here with rust around the base that I think I'm going to use as our test tube for the uh, Hartley oscillator. So initially we're going to make the Hartley oscillator work with a 6J5 triode, a very common tube. Once we get it happy with that tube, then we will wire in the Type 27 socket, and of course that takes a lot more current to light up. This uh, is a way to get where we need to get without destroying the Type 27 tube accidentally, or any other rare triode that you're using from the 20s. Here we go, a 6J5 Hartley oscillator, something I haven't seen since high school days. actually had a, uh, a high school shop teacher that demonstrated a 6J5 Hartley oscillator with a carbon microphone and we transmitted AM in the shop. So that's the last time I've seen a 6J5 Hartley oscillator. So when you look at this glass 6J5 you can see the structure inside. Now let's look at the Type 27 next to it. Might be a little hard to see for you but as you can see the 6J5 is obviously the progeny of the Type 27. It's in the family line and its dissipation and performance should be similar. 
If you can manage to find a transformer with world power universal primaries and a 6.3 and 120 volt secondary, or better yet, a center tap 240 volt secondary, that would be ideal. And then the power supply simplifies, it becomes very conventional, and only requires one transformer. With the dual transformer idea, you may find 6.3, 12.6, or even 24 volt center tap transformers that you can cleverly use to do the same thing at a lower cost. Always remember this is high voltage, so be careful and bring everything up with a variac if possible. In the next video, we're going to build and test the breadboard Hartley using a 6J5 valve just so we can get started with oscillations. Excellent stability. It's just drifting downward very slowly. Let's listen to the keying. So it keys better than your flex. Oh, I'm just kidding.